Hello, everyone. So today I'm excited to share with you an intriguing success story, the migration of the web arrangement platform to Envoy. Um, so this is a story uh, of how we at Spotify revamped our web proxy layer to use uh, Envoy, obviously. Uh, we'll dive into some technical details, share the lessons that we learned, and how, a bigger picture of how this looked for us. But I want to mention that we are initiating this endeavor with a purpose uh, to present to our peers a practical application of Envoy. Our intention is to share some experiences, the lessons that we learned, as I said, and challenges that we've encountered while adopting Envoy. And we hope that by doing so, we can initiate some fruitful discussions about the future and uh, in potential improvements and future uh, features that we can uh, make, all make together. So yeah, today we have a concise yet impactful agenda. We're going to start by presenting the Spotify perimeter. Uh, we're going to show an overview of our operational scope. Then we're going to zoom in into the web management platform. And we want to tell you about how this is a key component uh, that enriches our ecosystem. Then we're going to explore the motivation behind our migration um, and also uh, share some technical insights into the actual migration work. To conclude, we're going to wrap up and look at um, the migration process and uh, a look ahead at our vision and evolving infrastructure. So with no further ado, uh, let's embark on this uh, journey together, exploring technological evolution of Spotify. But yeah, first and foremost, allow me to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is uh, Sabrina Zotti. I am a software engineer at Spotify. Uh, I'm based in Milan, Italy. And today, I have the privilege to present alongside uh, Oliver Sol, staff engineer at Spotify, based in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, Oliver and I both work within the computer networking product area at Spotify, and specifically, we are part of the ATC team with a primary focus on the design and management of Spotify's infrastructure perimeter. I will now leave the spotlight to Oliver to introduce our work. Thanks, Sabrina. So we'll talk today about our web enrichment platform, but before we do that, let's zoom out and talk a little bit about Spotify's overall perimeter, which can provide some context for our presentation. Spotify runs backend services in Google's cloud platform, and traffic from Spotify clients, like mobile apps, TVs, cars, refrigerators, what have you, are routed through a Google Cloud load balancer. Just behind that load balancer, we have our Envoy-based edge proxy layer in all five of our GCP regions. We presented our edge proxy migration story here at EnvoyCon in 2019, and we'd be happy to take questions about that later or any time during the day. Just a side note, many of you may be curious. As an audio service, of course, our clients need the audio files themselves. Those are streamed from a CDN, and we're not going to talk about those today. Edge Proxy, however, <laughs> takes between uh, 6 and 10 million RPS every day. Uh, here's a recent graph of a week's traffic by GCP region. However, the vast majority of that traffic is our service traffic, like when your Spotify client needs to load a new playlist, or you add a track to your liked songs. Only about 1% of our traffic is web traffic, and you can imagine that that traffic has much different patterns and more specific needs in the proxy layer than our regular service traffic. We route the web traffic through Edge Proxy and then to our web enrichment platform, which has many web-specific capabilities that our web service owners rely on. That's what we'll dive into today, and Sabrina's going to tell you a little more about that. Thank you, Oliver. So before zooming in to the web arrangement platform, I'd like to start by mentioning an interesting fact. So three years ago, when the web arrangement platform was created, back then it was Team Nibbler. Uh, the primary goal of this project is to, was to dismantle this uh, monolithic system supporting data.spotify.com um, into separate web services developed by a different team, obviously. Um, to make a long story short, this project uh, resulted in the development of the platform uh, that we are now going to present uh, that allows the segre segregation of client-facing applications from uh, common business logic concerns. But not only that, as well as uh, also breaking up the monolith in multiple uh, leaner, simpler applications. Um, this aspect of the platform uh, caught a lot of attention and became quite popular within Spotify. And fast forward to today, uh, the web management platform is now a standard for, uh, the web, uh, for the web traffic. 
So um, about the web management platform. So you might wonder what this is exactly. It's uh, an infrastructure designed to handle the routing and the enrichment of the web requests. From an architectural perspective, it consists of three layers. So a configuration layer, a routing layer, obviously, and the enrichment layer. Takeaway until now is that all requests uh, directed to Spotify will pass uh, through the web enrichment platform. But let's backtrack for a moment. So Oliver mentioned uh, the concept of edge proxy, right? So uh, if you tuned in in our previous presentation in 2019, edge proxy serves as the initial point of entry for all the requests that hit Spotify. And that still stands. However, in the case of web services, edge proxy directs the request to utilize the web management platform. So within the routing layer, the request can be configured to either directly access the web service meaning that it will only use the routing uh, component of the platform, or it can be enhanced with enrichments. Uh, more on that on the next slide. But currently, the routing layer is based on Envoy and uh, directs the request to the appropriate web service. The enrichment layer is a tool, a feature, that allows developers to incorporate business logic into their requests, uh, such as uh, cookie handling, market analysis, and or even compliance to information standards like CSRF or CSP. But what does the enrichment layer actually look like in practice? Uh, once a request reaches the web enrichment platform during the routing phase, the platform will verify whether the request should be enhanced with some uh, business logic or not. If yes, the router will initiate a sub-request to concierge. Concierge is another uh, component of the platform and serves as the enrichment orchestrator. So to ensure a flexible infrastructure, the enrichment layer operates based on a plugin strategy, so concierge. Any member of our organization can develop an enricher, which is essentially a library that performs a specific function. Uh, this approach allows developers to extract business logic that maybe it's not really related to their application scope, and uh, this um, helps them make uh, their work more efficient, their application leaner, and while also providing the rest of the uh, organization with reusable functionalities. We have uh, an actual directory of enrichers, uh, kind of like a marketplace, where people can go and browse and search for an enricher that fits their requirements. Um, if such an enricher doesn't exist, uh, then individuals can develop and enable it with the assistance of concierge in the web enrichment platform. This sounds something like uh, a marketplace of enrichers, I can say. Um, I think it sounds pretty convenient, right? So if you think about it, if we developers at Spotify are already using the platform for routing, adding this kind of logic here is not a bad deal. Uh, currently, we support four types of enrichments within our system. The first one is content by enricher. Uh, in this case, the response will include a custom status code and uh, optionally a body content. Uh, so in this case, uh, the request will not pass through any web service. The second one is content by redirect. With this option, the response will be a redirect instead of hitting the web service. Uh, then we have content by proxy. Uh, in this, uh, this feature applies the instructions at the routing layer uh, and directs the request to the appropriate web service. But the web services uh, will process the request and will return the response for the run to the client. Uh, and then we have the final one, client response. Uh, if a concierge responds with client response, then these uh, instructions will be implemented. And the instructions will only be visible to the client and not to the web service. One important thing to note is that this process involves a mutual exchange of information, kind of like, uh, for instance, when using a content by redirect, the request will uh, pass through the web enrichment platform multiple times. A spoiler, uh, if uh, this sounds familiar to you, you might be onto something. Uh, Oliver will now tell you more about the behind the scenes of the configuration layer. Thanks, Sabrina. OK, let's talk about the configuration layer. And this is where we have to let you in on a little secret. The web enrichment platform was originally built around Nginx. So this configuration layer, uh, layer may not smell very much like an Envoy control plane, but bear with us. So how does it work? Logically, the configuration layer has two responsibilities. Transforming our configuration API into Nginx configuration and performing service discovery of the upstream web services. 
But architecturally, we need to manage a fleet of proxies that auto-scale. And since we don't have a control plane, we need that configuration logic to be running alongside each proxy replica. The configuration layer, then, is co-located next to each proxy replica as another process in the Nginx container and runs service discovery every 30 seconds, dynamically updating the Nginx configuration. On the other hand, when there's an update to the static configuration, like when a new web service is added, we make a new deployment of the router layer, uh, and the configuration is bundled along with it. As we move to Envoy, we use the same approach supported by Envoy's dynamic configuration mechanism. The configuration layer simply produces Envoy YAML rather than Nginx configuration. And during the migration, the configuration layer played a key role in abstracting away the proxy implementation from our users. Ideally, they would have no idea that we're changing out the engine, so to speak. OK, so we just covered the overall structure of the web enrichment platform. And now I'd like to cover some of our rationale for rebasing the platform to sit on top of Envoy. There are many reasons we chose to migrate to Envoy, but the primary reason was organizational. The team who originally created the web enrichment platform, as Sabrina mentioned, they were called Nibbler, had seen that Envoy was gaining a foothold at Spotify and that Edge Proxy had benefited greatly from using Envoy. They also saw the potential of merging the web enrichment platform directly into Edge Proxy, which of course would never happen unless it moved to Envoy. Now from the technical perspective, Envoy's feature set was roughly aligned with the features we needed to support in the web enrichment platform. The team had done some discovery into Envoy and hadn't found any major feature blockers. And additionally, they'd noted that Envoy had a vibrant open source community, all of you, which made the team feel confident that we could contribute to Envoy to fill any gaps that we might find. The Envoy feature set that was most important to the web enrichment platform was the set of features supporting extensibility, XDOS-Z, uh, XPROC, support for Lua, Wasm, the native plugin model, and as we heard earlier, uh, Go as well. Um, however, it's important to note that although Envoy supports, um, supports high performance, performance wasn't terribly important to us for this application. Extensibility was really the key feature. Anyway, the team decided to go ahead with their decision to use Envoy and started engineering work early last year. Although we don't currently have concrete plans to merge the web enrichment platform with Envoy, we have joined the teams Nibbler merged with ATC earlier this year. And now, Sabrina's going to tell you a little bit more about how the engineering work actually went. Thank you, Oliver. Let's take now a look at how we re-engineered WAP on Envoy. Uh, luckily for us, the transition was quite intuitive. And something that was very helpful in the process was obviously Envoy flexibility. Many of the changes uh, were primarily um, concerning the configuration and the routing layer with varying degrees of difficulty. We were, we were lucky to have a lot of uh, one on one matching between the features, but I want to mention a few uh, of uh, the things that we need to change. Uh, starting from the upstream handling, um, we, uh, first we need to uh, slightly change the, so how the service discovery works. Uh, Envoy played a crucial role in this process. Uh, as our services need to find each other through engine room, uh, the configuration layer. Then uh, we have the health checks. Uh, for now, we rely on the active health checks through the outlier detection to ensure that the services are healthy. Uh, another thing was timeouts. Uh, we can now configure timeouts uh, requests uh, per app stream, uh, and this ensures responsiveness. Regexes. Uh, so uh, regexes is a, a feature very important for us because we use them uh, for request processing. So we had to work a bit around limitations with the regex engine uh, in order to keep regex patterns efficient. But thanks to Envoy being open source, we were able to improve this feature to fit all requirements. Uh, and this resulted in a PR that we opened, allowing us and potentially others to expand the capabilities. Uh, these changes addressed an issue encountered with the regex rewrite as part of the redirect when we match the mesh path does not match the entire path. Uh, the problem was uh, that only the mesh section of the original path, for instance the prefix, was substituted with the regex rewrite, whereas the expected behavior is to replace the entirety of the path. Another thing is that now customers have the ability to determine the appropriate course of action when uh, errors are returned by a vertical. This is a feature that we offered in the platform. Uh, this, um, this can involve intercepting the error and invoking another vertical that displays the error page. 
as a result, all the verticals within a website can use the same error page without uh, needing to uh, independently implement it. It appears that such a functionality is still not ready for production in Envoy, so we had to depend on our uh, custom Lua filter to fulfill this requirement uh, further. Moving on, uh, speaking of integration tasks, we're incorporating Envoy to validate the configuration and prevent unsupported or complex uh, rejects patterns. We also managed to simplify our system by using built-in Envoy features, uh, reducing the amount of custom code we had to maintain. Features like service uh, of filter, dynamic forward proxy, or external authorization filter played a significant role in reducing our custom Lua plugins. Additionally, we benefited uh, from some new features as well. For instance, the, we uh, greatly uh, make greatly use of the admin, um, uh, Envoy admin endpoint uh, to support our operational tasks. On another note, uh, as Oliver mentioned before, throughout this process, we were so pleasantly surprised by the supportive community and assistance that we received. While this project is still in progress, we are very pleased with the progress that we made and so enthusiastic about our upcoming plans. Sabrina just covered many of the successes we had as we implemented the Envoy layer. But of course, it wasn't all perfect. There were a few places Envoy wasn't quite so aligned with the features we already offered in the platform. Let's talk about a couple specific issues we had. Rate limiting is the first example. The web enrichment platform supports rate limiting, and quite a, quite a few of our users had enabled the feature. But the core issue here is that rate limiting in Nginx and rate limiting in Envoy differ in some key ways. Specifically, Nginx supports using the client IP address as the rate limiting key, whereas Envoy does not, unless we use the global rate limiting filter and the separate distributed rate limiting infrastructure. We didn't want to build out that separate rate limiting infrastructure, so we decided to look at the problem a bit more holistically. We looked at our rate limiting users and tried to understand their various use cases. And it turned out that most of them use rate limiting to protect their services uh, from unwanted traffic spikes. But supporting that use case has a, has a few problems. Users don't have a good way to determine a specific rate over which they wanted to limit their traffic, especially when their traffic varies over the course of a day. And from an operational perspective, we would have to do capacity planning of a rate limiting infrastructure, uh, which is especially hard when we don't really know what traffic to expect. So we'd been down this path before with Edge Proxy, and we didn't feel like blindly using the same approach. So the, de uh, the team decided to pause and look at more long-term solutions. And unfortunately, I must say, we haven't settled on a solution quite yet. But rather, we're investing in our broader traffic protection strategy. The other example I want to talk about is file serving. And I should start by saying that this was not really an Nginx versus Envoy issue. We had a feature in our web enrichment platform that allowed users to define raw Nginx config. Yeah, yes, you heard that right. It's the definition of a leaky abstraction. Whatever good reasons the team had for uh, including this feature in the first place, clearly we couldn't port that forward, uh, port that functionality forward to be supported under Envoy. So again, we, uh, we took a look at what our users were doing with this mechanism, and luckily we found that everyone was using it simply to serve small files, such as a robots.txt file. I think we really dodged a bullet here. This could have been abused much, uh, much more widely with many more use cases. But given our findings, we settled on building a proper file serving feature into the API, and currently the implementation simply just proxies a, a request back to a GCS bucket. But in talking to our users about this feature, we also heard that they want the ability to use a downstream cache, and so we're considering if and how we might support HTTP caching in the platform. It's not commonly used for backend services, but it would be useful in the web space. Now, Sabrina is going to tell us a bit about the actual migration. Thank you. Uh, so uh, with this slide, I would just want to provide a quick snapshot of how the migration process looked. Uh, the good news is that everything went uh, smooth, and we currently are somewhere near 90% uh, completed in terms of the migration. Uh, until now, we have made the switch with zero downtime and pretty much zero issues, almost. <laughs> uh, however, we did take some precautions and systematically moved our traffic following this procedure. So we set up some migration cohorts, uh, dividing the user base in order to facilitate the control transition. Then we contacted the owners of the web services and maintained a clear communication and collaboration with them. 
when it was time to schedule the migration window uh, meant uh, picking an optimal time frame for minimal disruption. Uh, one thing that was very helpful uh, for us was that we were able to temporarily operate traffic splitting with the help of uh, Envoy, uh, Envoy Proxy. This helped us oversee potential issues in time and also avoid disruptions. Monitoring was key, after all. We prepared a set of dashboard with overview of traffic and what was happening with the requests and the enrichers, as well as monitoring resources. When we assessed that everything was fine, then we did a full switch on uh, traffic, so 100% of traffic going to the web management platform with Envoy. And then some more monitoring to ensure peak performance, uh, as well as collaborating with the service owners for the long term. Next, Oliver will share a snippet of our uh, future plans. So now that we're almost done with the migration, where do we go from here? Well, we're not sure exactly, but a main focus area in the next planning cycle is to evolve the web enrichment platform. The first couple items that we have here in this list are almost certain. A control plane. Let's face it, the current configuration layer is a bit of a hot mess, and we'd love to reuse our, our expertise with the edge proxy control plane and apply that to the web enrichment platform. Also, the tap filter. We've, we already have a few use cases for the tap filter, or at least use cases where we think we might start with the tap filter and iterate towards custom filters if and when we think that makes sense. One specific effort we're actually currently working on is creating a granular data set of traffic going through edge proxy. We've already run a prototype that uses the tap filter and some sampling. And I think it's pretty likely that we'll use the same approach, specifically targeting our web traffic in the web enrichment platform. And the other items here are a bit more exploratory. Uh, as Sabrina hinted at before, careful viewers may have noticed that the API that we offer in Concierge and the enrichment layer looks very similar to Envoy's XProc API. So perhaps we rebuild Concierge as uh, an Envoy filter and call external enrich enrichers with XProc. Another idea is to have some coordination between the configuration APIs of Edge Proxy and the web enrichment platform. Uh, maybe we could automatically provision endpoints in Edge Proxy if we know they're web enrichment platform users. And lastly, the mythical idea of actually merging the web enrichment platform into Edge Proxy itself. There are so many ways we could actually do this, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of ideas by the team over the coming planning cycles. So of course, we'll have to wait and see what the future will bring, but I can speak for the team and say that the future is bright with Envoy. So lastly, we'd like to say a heartfelt thank you to the current and past members of both teams, Nibbler and ATC. Uh, thank you to the conference organizers for inviting us to speak, and the countless others who helped this migration a success. I extend the thank you as well. And with that, uh, we'd love to take any questions that you might have uh, or give you a short break otherwise. Um, and also, please use the QR code here to submit any feedback that you might have for us. Thank you. Thanks for the presentation. I noticed one of the things you listed as uh, a challenge during the migration was something to do with a uh, redirect policy for customer response, mm -hmm. and also uh, dealing with some interesting quirks of internal redirects in a migration at the moment, so I'm curious to hear more about that, if you can elaborate. That's something we might have to look up. I don't remember the details. That was something that um, I believe one of our past team members submitted an upstream patch in Envoy, where I think there was, um, I think there was something where you could redirect, but it didn't maintain the host header. It was something like that, do you recall? Yeah, mm, I'm not sure. No I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll chat later and look it up and get you a better answer. Uh, curious about your experience with Envoy filters. Uh, uh, I mean, I've heard typically that it's preferred, preferable to use C++, but uh, what about some of the other languages? What was your experience and the pros and cons? Hmm. I, can, I can take a stab at this one. Um, I, this is an interesting question. I think specifically for the web enrichment platform, uh, we already kind of had a choice made for us because we had so much custom code in Lua already um, to support Nginx. We basically just moved everything over and, and we didn't try and redesign things at that point. Um, from, from a more strategic standpoint, taking into consider, uh, con consideration both the web enrichment platform and uh, Edge Proxy that our team also maintains, um, 
There are differing opinions in the team, I think. Um, but maybe we can say that for Edge Proxy, where we're really running all of Spotify's traffic, we would prefer to have something which is um, uh, very maintainable and very high performance. Um, but perhaps there are cases where we might want to prototype something in perhaps a language that, uh, that team members are, are, are uh, uh, more, um, more practiced with. We don't have that many people who are actually good at C++. So I think um, um, we're interested in, in looking at some of the other interfaces. I'm also uh, personally interested in Wasm as well because I think some of the, some of the logic that we might want to see in in these various proxy layers, we might want to run them outside of Envoy as well. And so then uh, having a portable format would be useful. Okay, thank you. Hey, two questions for you. Um, I guess first, uh, are you using Envoy for API also? Is that your team, a different team? I'm just curious, like, you know, what that looks like, web versus API? Um, so it used to be multiple teams, but uh, those teams have joined. So now yeah. it's all one one happy family. Gotcha. Okay, but are you using Envoy for your APIs? As yes. Well? Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, Edge proxy that we talked about before. That's that's where all the APIs go. Got it. And then you mentioned control plane. Mm -hmm. Have you started your journey into that yet, or it's just like an idea right now? I'm just curious. Like, have you started looking at? I mean, there's lots of control planes for Envoy out there, right? You know, mm -hmm. I'm curious if you found anything that looks interesting for web specifically or not. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you want to answer or shall I? Yes, well, uh, as Oliver mentioned, many of the decisions that we took uh, are uh, coming from uh, the, the previous um, 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 uh, architecture of the web management platform, but uh, control planes definitely something that we are looking into and uh, plan to invest in this uh, upcoming cycle. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, I can say as well, I mean, part of your question is interesting, um, uh, anything specifically about web. We haven't really looked at anything specific about web, but uh, Edge Proxy does have a custom control plane written in Java, um, and I believe we're also the maintainers of the, of the Java control plane um, gotcha. in the Envoy community. So that's, that's pretty much the, the no-brainer direction we'll go. Um, how we actually support specific web features, I think that'll just be an engineering exercise in the team. Got it, okay. Thanks. Sure. Hi. Great talk. Thank you. Um, a bunch of questions come to mind, but I'll just narrow down to two quick ones. One of them is um, for your, um, in general, this seems like a pretty high throughput application for Envoy. And I'm wondering if you've looked at your usage of features related to the performance and scalability of your proxy, in particular, your reliance on regexes for doing redirects. Um, we've been shy about scaling, about having lots of regex in your URL map, thinking they'll be a drag on performance, and if you've done flame graphs, et cetera, to look at that. Um, I'll just also shoot out my other question, which is that you talked about writing some custom filters, and I'm wondering if you're following along what Alyssa referenced about XPROC and a way to offload some of that to maybe other services that you might have running to service those content modifications. Thanks. Yes, okay, so those questions. Um, um, around performance, uh, as I mentioned before, for this application, performance performance isn't very high on our list, but I imagine we will get to performance at some point. But in in uh, in in my mind, it very much depends on how we consider merging the web immersion platform with Edge Proxy. In Edge Proxy, that is very performance. Uh, um, um, very performance sensitive, and, and we're, we're doing a lot of engineering work to increase performance of web proxy itself. Um, around performance for regexes, yes, that could conceivably be a problem in, in the web enrichment platform, but we're not, we're not so worried about it. We can always just throw more hardware uh, at it for the time being, so I think. And around uh, XPROC, um, yes, we're definitely looking into XPROC, and I, I think XPROC can really help us evolve uh, the, the enrichment part of this platform. Um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, in, in my company, UFS, we're actually going through a similar migration mm -hmm. from other reverse proxy to Envoy. Um, actually, first question, were you able to achieve timeouts and retries to upstream within Envoy or just you know, via Envoy filters? That is a question I don't think I can answer. Do you have an answer? I think we don't extensively use retries. I think we set them to one mm -hmm. only, so. I see, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Cool, yeah. The second question you mentioned about the global control plane, right? Uh, in your scale, I assume, I, I assume that you probably have lots of edge proxies, right? Like, is the control plane, like, how are you guys handling, let's say, update to Envoy, update to the filters, you know, the, the plugins, source code? How are you achieving that with this kind of, you know, distributed edge proxies? Do you want to come answer? Katarina <laughs> is a uh, part of uh, ATC with us. <laughs> yeah, so the scalability of control plane for the edge proxy layer has been a, a known problem for us. So first of all, we switched to Delta XDS. And recently we had a problem with Java control plane when it got hammered by envoys, like in a single region. Let's say we had some issue with the DDoS attack and then we, okay, let's scale up the edge layer and then after that, when the control plane restarts and all the envoys try to connect roughly simultaneously and to request the first state of the world snapshot, then our control plane just went crazy and it's just uh, stopped serving requests and envoys basically got the stale EDS assignments. And for that, what we have implemented as a short term, rough, roughly low cost remediation was what we call XDS rate limiting. And we also reached out to the community and asked if other, like rest of the community would be interested in that, basically how that works. Every time there is a, a new XDS client connecting to the control plane, we, we keep a internal logic in the Java control plane that uh, checks, okay, this is a new client connecting, or have I seen that client before? If it's a new client, it has a configuration of how many concurrent XDS streams it allows per second, and if that one reaches, it sends, uh, uh, I think, uh, I, uh, some 5.0 code and like request, uh, resource exhausted, try later, and we rely on the mechanism in Envoy to do retries. And like say, let's say in the largest region, it takes us with uh, 10 uh, uh, concurrent XDS per second, streams per second, it takes us roughly 30 seconds for all the Envoys to get the first snapshot, but uh, in that way we stabilize the control plane and we can scale up. We tried a very large, uh, like 500 Envoy machines in a single region with a single control plane, and we did control plane restart, and XDS rate limiting uh, has been proven uh, like a battle-proof uh, uh, mechanism for that. Cool, that's yeah. great. Um, just one kind of follow-up question. Like, you know, do you have any mechanism that allows you to do gradual route? Let's say that you are running out a new configuration. How do you make sure that, you know, to control the blast radius to start with? Um. This is a feature that we are very much looking forward, and uh, currently we are running on GCE, and this is not supported, and we are on the way to move into Kubernetes, and this is the feature that we are looking for. Basically, every Envoy upgrade for us is a stress uh, event. We like it's uh, create a risk events calendar. We uh, notify our company, and uh, then we are having our hands shaking and like looking at the graphs uh, to for early detection. But we have caused a bunch of uh, bad incidents uh, because we we don't have that capability of reaching our rollouts. But we do like canary deployments and then rolling out uh, globally. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. The, this is a good um, uh, a good input for our deployments team. We're, we're definitely looking for uh, for globally progressive rollouts, but we don't have that at the moment. Hi. Uh, I'm wondering what you've considered on the sort of simpler side of rate limiting. You said that you don't want to roll out the whole infrastructure that Envoy can provide, um, and that your users are used to something else that's simpler and different. Like you said, you had some things in mind, and I wanted to know what those are. Yes, this is uh, this is complicated. We can talk more about this afterwards, but um, I mean, we're we're looking uh, from a technology perspective. We're looking um, um, we're looking into RLQS. Um, that doesn't necessarily address the, the the product side of the problem, really. Um, one one idea we had is um, um, because we're interested in per second rate limits, um, it, durability of the rate limiting infrastructure isn't so important. And so we were, we were considering using, um, um, using maglev on the, um, uh, on the rate limiting cluster. And, um, and then like basically you're, you're distributing the, the IP addresses uh, uh, like along, the, along the cluster hash. Um, and if, if one of those rate limiting instances might go down, it doesn't matter so much. It doesn't take down the whole infrastructure. And that way you could also auto scale the, the rate limiting infrastructure, taking care of some of the capacity planning concerns. But that's, that's just an idea. I have, a, I have an open tab in my code editor to, like, that has something kind of working in Envoy, um, but that's not supported at the moment. I 
think we're about out of time, but uh, I think we're about out of time. But if there's any more questions, um, we'd be happy to take them offline. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Fascinating talk.